Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I love Airtable and we're using it for project management and our client management, but I need a better, more cost-effective solution to be able to take this information and share it out with our clients. If that's the case, you're looking for a client portal, which you can build with software. Now, software allows you to connect to tools like Airtable or Google Sheets as a backend and be able to expose information that you have inside of Airtable to a broader audience like your clients or your prospects. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're a software and Airtable implementation partner. Now, if you haven't gotten started yet with software, you can do so for free using the affiliate link in the description below. The client portal is one of the most popular templates inside of software. We can click on it up here under templates, and we're going to use this template. From here, we can choose between two different data sources. In this video, I'm going to be using Airtable, but you can do it with Google Sheets as well. From here, we'll need a personal access token. I'm going to regenerate an existing one that I have, but you can create a new one. I'll copy that information, go back into softer. We'll choose that personal access token and paste that information in. And then from here, we can copy that base. It has a template for our actual Airtable base. And that's what we're doing right now is we're copying that information into Airtable. I'll put it inside of my workspace here. And this is going to generate all of the tables and the data that we need to get our client portal up and running. The great part is, is that we can easily make tweaks and be able to add new tables and new fields and things that we need later on as we're in this building process. So you can see the tables that it adds are users. These are going to be the people who can actually log into the application. And we might have different roles. So we can have our actual clients themselves, but we also might have our internal consultants who are working on projects with our clients. And then we could also have an internal admin. So we can set up as many different kinds of custom sets of permissions of user groups that we want inside of the system and give access to who we want. Then we also have our clients. This is the table of the customer accounts. We have three examples here and they're linked to individual people or contacts that we have, as well as projects that they're working on. We have the projects, they're in flight with certain statuses and information that we need to see. And we have tasks, a whole big table of tasks that link to those projects. So we've got active projects for our clients with the tasks that we're working on. And then we tie this all together with our invoices and we've got the actual dates and costs, but we can actually have the PDF files. So if we want them to be able to download and see all of their latest invoice data, we can do that as well. Back inside of software, now that we've set up our base in Airtable, we can go ahead and create the software application. And you'll notice that this takes care of a lot of the tasks automatically for us because we're using a template. We don't have to set everything up from scratch ourselves. So I'm gonna close out of here right now. One of the things you'll notice right away is that there's four different menus up at the top. Now, why is that? Well, the beauty of software is that we can control who sees what inside of the system. So remember we talked about those user roles before, those user groups, and we can restrict who's going to see each version of this menu. So we can hover over this icon and we can see that this top menu is visible only to clients. This is our clients who are going to be interested in downloading their invoice information or seeing their projects. Now, this is different from our internal consultants who don't need access to those invoices. They simply want to be able to interact with projects. And then we have non-logged in users. So we want to be selling them our services. So we have some static information on a services page and a contact us form. And then as an admin, our admin can see and do and update everything inside of the system. So we can control this behavior of who gets to see what on each page. And then we can even get down to the block level and say who specifically can see certain attributes or certain blocks on the page. From here, let's go ahead and click into our users. We could add new users here directly within the software interface. We could generate a password or software has this really cool ability to have a magic link, which is going to automatically authenticate a user just by clicking a link. We've got lots of different options there. You could even add them as users on the Airtable side, and they're going to sync back over into software. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what these users can do inside of the system. If we click on settings and we can go to our user groups, in our user groups, we can see that we already have predefined user groups set up. Now, if I click on this, let's choose clients for an example, and we can see that this is going to be visible if that logged in user's role, so we can choose different fields within Airtable and be able to say, hey, based on their role in this case, then if they are a client, we want them to be part of this client group. So we can get really granular when it comes to permissions by creating our own groups. These are some that are set up in that template by example, admins, clients, consultants, and our logged in users. 
but you can create your own custom groups as well. So maybe you want to have some external participants that aren't covered in these groups, and you could add your own user group. Let's talk a little bit about the page structure. So if we click onto our pages, you'll notice a theme here. We've got projects and project details, consultants, consultant details, clients, client details. And really what this is doing, you can call this structure however you want. You don't have to follow this structure at all. You're not locked into this. But essentially, the template is having a projects page represent your list of projects. Here are the projects that we see. And then our project details are going to be about that specific project that you click into so you can see the underlying tasks and team members and things like that. Now, this block for our projects, we can take a look at the visibility here. And this block is only visible to our clients and our consultants. But we actually go a step further because we wouldn't want a client to be able to see all of the projects inside of the system. That wouldn't make any sense. Instead, we want them to see their own projects. So if we scroll down here, we can set up this conditional filter logic to say, if the client is the currently logged in user, so once you're logged in as a user, if that client matches here, you're going to be able to see your client projects, or we can check on it based on email. So this way, we're not showing all the projects to everybody. We're showing the relevant ones to those individuals. And that's how we're able to have this really awesome security permissions-based access of who can see what inside of our software application. Now we can change what displays here as well. So for example, if I look at this, I see by default, we're looking at the client name. But if I'm already logged in and only seeing projects for my client, Medi, why would I want to see that over and over again? Medi, Medi, Medi. Instead, I want to display some additional information. So I can click on the content here, scroll down a little bit. This is where the client is showing. I'm just going to tweak this. So maybe instead of the client, I want to be able to see some of the representative tasks that we're working on. So I'll change that to tasks. Uh, and so, of course, we want the label to be tasks as well. And then from here, instead of it just being text, which is fine, I don't like the look of that as much. So let me change this to be our tags. I'm just going to search for this here, tag. And there we go. I like how that displays a little bit more. So you can see that we can tweak that based on what makes sense to us as we're implementing software. I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And when we publish it, let's try to log in as a user to see what they see. So I'm going to go back to my users table here. And who is a good example for us? Lucy, I believe, is a client. So I'm going to find Lucy. And let's copy that magic link here for Lucy. I'm going to open up a new tab and just click on that link. And this is going to authenticate us. So this is what's really cool, that magic link I was talking about. We just click on that link and we're authenticated as Lucy. So this is really good for user impersonation or just easy access. And here are those projects that we talked about. And if we scroll down, or let me actually go to the projects page because this is the home page here. But we can see those projects. And now I have those tasks which have that nice box around those tasks as opposed to what we were seeing with the client. And you can see this is restricted, so I can only see those projects that are relevant to me as a user. Now let's open up one of those projects like content writing here, and that's going to take us to that project details page. So I can see here's our project and our team and some of the tasks that we're working on. But eh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to see our team front and center for our project because that information doesn't change regularly, whereas our tasks do. And I don't get quite as much information as I'm looking for in this Kanban. I do like it from the fact that I can drag and drop that information. But I want to look at this in a table. So let's go back into Softer here and head back into our pages for the project details. And on the project details, let's go ahead and add that block that feels like it might be a better fit for us. So I'm going to add a new block here. And we're going to search for a table. We'll choose the table block here. And this is where we configure it with our data. So we're already authenticated to Airtable. And from here, we're going to search for our client portal by software is the one that we created. And we're going to choose from our tasks table. So this is automatically configuring it. You can see it's really easy. It's just this drag and drop interface here. And this automatically is starting to populate that data for us. Now I'm going to come into my content here and we'll adjust a couple of things. So this project name right here is wanting to show an image. Now we could show the actual text for the project name, but we're on the project details page. So that feels a little bit like overkill. So let's see if we could change this to text. 
And instead of project name, let's go by the due date because that's a little bit more relevant to us. Awesome, that's looking pretty good. Now you can see that there's this filtering up here by these tags and we wanna change this a little bit. So let me click here and instead of these manual tags, we're going to filter by, let's say the task status. Great, and we'll just change that label to status. And that seems to make a lot more sense. So let me publish these changes again, and then we'll head back into where we're looking at it as a user, refresh that page, and here we go. Here's our tasks table. So as you can see, this is really easy to be able to configure. So if you need things beyond just tasks and invoices and projects, you can do all of that with the power of Airtable and Softer. As you can see, it's really easy to build a client portal inside a software. You can get started for free using the link in the description below. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.